and welcome to this special edition of Political Capital. I'm Vivek Law. The world's biggest conglomerates are making a beeline for Prime Minister Narendra Modi, meeting him in the United States over the course of the next few days. Joining me now to talk about the message that Prime Minister Modi carries with him to New York and Washington and to articulate more on the kind of vision that he's been talking about and laying down in the last hundred days and whether or not there has been a real change on the ground. Joining me is Shaurya Doval, who is the director of the India Foundation, a think tank closely associated with the Prime Minister's economic policy outreach. Shaurya leads principal investment initiatives and deal originations in India as part of the management team at Zeus Caps. He has also worked at global financial firms like GE Capital and Morgan Stanley. Thanks very much, Shaurya. It's always a pleasure having you here. It started with the event you all did in Feb. And, uh, Subsequently, Mr. Modi became the Prime Minister, and even as recently as the other day when he gave this extremely charged speech at the Make India, Make in India, we've, we've heard his vision now on multiple occasions in, in terms of what is his thinking. 100 days now that they're up, and I remember last time when we spoke, you said it's still very early days. Do you believe that uh, things are also moving in terms of action? Because there are many now who are saying that we hear things Things aren't really changing on the ground. Could, could you tell us what's the sense you're picking up in your conversations with investors? I think you can, you know, you can answer this question in a way, in the, the first way, by just referring to the statistics. For those who argue that nothing has happened, if you look at the rate of the GDP growth, it has registered the fastest growth in this last quarter that it has uh, in, the, in the last two and a half years at 5.7%. 5, 5 the IIP is up at 3%. The stock market is at 28,000. And by and large, there is a positive feeling about India. Sure. So as far as statistics on the ground go, and they may be for a limited period of just three months, uh, but that is all that is the data that we have. I think there is um, the facts speak for themselves that indeed things have started to change on the ground. Mm. We can also start seeing elements of the longer term architecture that this government is putting in place. Budget was one such milestone in this in these last hundred days, but there have been other announcements that have come that have actually started to demonstrate that the government is putting in place an architecture which will not only spur growth, but sustain growth over the long term. And you mentioned this uh, initiative by the Prime Minister yesterday about Make in India. Uh, that, is, that, is, that was one element of that. So I think by and large, it's not fair to say that mm. things haven't changed on the ground. Mm. So let's try and understand the long-term architecture, because that's really the key piece that everybody's, especially the serious investors. By the way, there is no doubt about the fact that the sentiment has turned. And there is no one who claims otherwise. The question really is that when will we start seeing certain parts of this architecture being put in place? Would you like to give us, say, an example, pick any sector, and then maybe we can go into some specific sectors as well? Well, it depends upon, the answer to that question depends upon what kind of a change mm. are you looking at in the first place. Mm. I think there is by and large an expectation, which you are sort of articulating through your question, that there, sh there will be big announcements mm. that will demonstrate a change in direction, a change in, uh, a cha or, or a great plan of our, you know, great architecture that's being go going to be laid out. My assessment is that it's going to be a little bit different. Okay. The architecture that is being laid out is already work in progress. Mm. And there is no one such announcement, mm. but there is bits and small pieces of many, many small amount announcements and many, many small initiatives that will ultimately complete the mosaic. Mm. Uh, and the change may not be as large and as profound as people expected it to be. And hence their disappointment or the concern that nothing is happening. You mean profound in terms of announcing something announcing big, though big. the impact could be actually very big Absolutely. of these measures. Absolutely. Let right. me try and illustrate yeah. this by a, um, by, a, by a case in point. When he took power in end of May 2014, mm. and I'm, again I will talk from a perspective of investors, one of the largest problems India was facing was that India had a credibility issue mm. given the last 10 years. And 
before anything was to move on the ground, India had to overcome the credibility gap hmm. in, in any meaningful way. Now, if I analyze post fast forward 110 or whatever day, number of days have passed and look at it and try and see what Mr. Modi is doing, I see him acting at sort of three levels. The first level he has established in restoring that credibility by his outreach program on at a G2G level. Right. So he has engaged with China, he has engaged with Japan, he is now in the US. China that has invested only $400 million in India since 2000 mm. has now committed to invest $35 billion in the next five years. Mm. I'm only talking about G to G. I'm not talking about you know, any other element. Japan, which was doing about 15 billion or is actually now also or about seven and a half billion has actually increased it to 20. Mm. We will see what the outcome of the US comes. So in restoring the first part of the credibility, he's gone through the top down way. He is, he is Go, he's making an outreach and going to, uh, going to the world and putting India as an investment destination at a government to government, which is extremely important. As a matter of fact, later this year, he will be the first prime minister of India to visit Australia after Rajiv Gandhi, mm. you know, on a, on a bilateral basis. So I think the first element of that is that in restoring credibility, he is going about establishing a G to G buy it, that yes, mm. India is open for business, India would like to engage in business. The second thing that he is doing is he started the G2B engagement. The government has started to start engaging with business. Mm. If yesterday was again a case in point where he went out and outreach to the companies both in India and the world mm. and he engaged with them. Mm. And I think finally with the ease of uh, improving of doing business in India, we will start to see the B2B engagement, mm. which in my view is really where you will see the majority of the action happen as things unfold over the next few years. Do you, do you believe, uh, Sharia, because you would know this, uh, because, you know, unlike others, Mr. Modi prefers to go about his work fairly quietly in terms of his uh, team and what they're really doing. Is there a lot of activity going on in terms of now that the ideas have come in, he has many of his own, uh, and I'm sure he's receiving them from various people, including your foundation. Do you get a sense that there is a lot of activity in terms of now putting together all of this and activating it, action? That is what actually I meant. Uh, that, you know, while these may not be grand announcements, but are you seeing that kind of action, ideas being converted into action? Absolutely. I mean, even make in India. Just think of it from a, from a, from a, uh, just, just see what happened till yesterday. From, from conception of an idea that yes, we should have manufacturing in India. What has he done? He has effectively translated that as a leader should into a real tangible, uh, uh, um, you know, a, a, a sort of a rallying point, hmm. which can now be identified with a clear uh, logo, a clear vision, a clear sense of direction. And he is able to articulate some elements of it by saying, we want to involve industry, we want to involve foreign corporates, we want to involve, we want to make India a manufacturing hub. Hmm. Uh, this would have taken a lot of effort. This would just didn't happen naturally. You know, the, if you just go and see the website of um, Manufacture India or even Invest India, even Invest India, the, the ability of how they bought a one, uh, one portal uh, or you know, a single point of solution as part of the Make India campaign, which had, been ex which had existed till 2012 but was really non-functional, mm. into all of this into a synergistic way. I think actually shows that to your point that indeed a lot of work is going on behind the mm. scenes in terms of translating some of these ideas into, into action points, but they will come in a set of milestones. You know, it will not be one, you know, you have to prepare the ground. As I said, you cannot have, as an investor, I'll tell you, you cannot have a B2B engagement unless G2G buy-in is there. Mm. And you saw that. Look, look at the case of China. China with $4 trillion of foreign exchange reserves uh, has invested only $400 million in India in the last 15 years. There was a serious G2G issue. The G2G issues were not resolved. And, 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 you know, and so there has been movement on that. So, yes, there is a lot of work that is going on. Mm. Uh, and, and, but it's, it's starting to happen through a series of milestones. Mm. And uh, rather than, as I said earlier, one big announcement and one you know, sweep of the brush where everything will be solved. Mm. 
Hmm. One of the biggest concerns uh, global investors have is the fact that the ease of doing business in India is extremely, we are among the lowest ranked. Uh, he, he seems to have uh, a lot of ideas, believes some he's executed back in Gujarat as well. Uh, do you see a lot of things changing on that front? Absolutely. I think, I think if I were to hazard a guess, one of the signature uh, of, of this government, and when history will look at it, will be its ability to ease the way of doing business in India. All of this will translate, I think, at the end of the day, into ease of doing business in India. And I think this government would hopefully be remembered for this one particular uh, factor. Because if they can take care of this, in my view, the Indian entrepreneurship, the innate nature of Indian society will take care of the rest. Mm. Um, and I think he's very, very focused, as you said. It is easier said than done, given the layout of our administrative system, given the layout of our constitutional system, it is easier said than done. Mm. But I think the effort of, of this government is in that direction. Mm. He has, of course, clearly articulated it. He said it again yesterday when he talked about not only good governance, which he said in today's world is not satisfactory enough, it has to be effective governance. Mm. Uh, governance has to be an important shareholder or an important stakeholder in success of corporates. Mm. Um, and in success of business and success of development. So, you know, he's not skirting the issue. Mm. He's not, he's not uh, you know, pandering to, the, to, 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 uh, to a constituency and not uh, taking the problem head on, which, mm. as a matter of fact, for me, uh, is in itself a refreshing change because for a long time I've not seen any national leader very clearly articulate that, yes, there is a problem, mm. yes, we have issues, and that we will try and work towards those issues. So at least he's putting himself on the line um, in, in, uh, uh, and, uh, for being evaluated uh, by, by saying that these are, I have identified these issues early in my administration and I propose to do something about them. How important is this U.S. visit, according to you? He, he clearly, in the few months that he's been in power, foreign relations, you've called it nicely G to G, seems to be uh, top on his mind, isn't it? He's, all, he's engaging. He's engaging, and each of these engagements, at least so far, uh, seem to have succeeded in terms of building a kind of a rapport, a warmth, and, of course, the uh, business which is coming out of it. Uh, how critical is this U.S. trip? I think extremely critical. Um, it is extremely critical because U.S. indeed is a very important trading partner of India, an investment partner of India. Uh, India will continue to look at the U.S. and will continue to engage with the U.S. Uh, in the next few years. His administration will continue. And I think to that extent, this trip is as critical as it is the Japan or China and even Australia, and, you know, I keep saying Australia because I think it was an important constituency for our, from our business interests, both from a natural resources as well as investment perspective, that uh, had been completely off India's radar for all these years. So I think uh, this, to that extent it will be extremely critical. Um, and I think Mr. Modi does recognize that when he talks about um, this, uh, this, uh, you know, this G2G engagement. But I think there is, a, there is an extreme uh, sense of realism in him when he actually says that, um, you know, we have to build our own internal capabilities. We have to, you know, build India first in being able to then make these engagements effective. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you know, these engagements on their own will not matter for much. As I was just giving you the example of, of, the, of, the, of the issue with China. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, there, is a, there is a right combination of both. But you are absolutely right. In my view, this engagement is very, very critical. He has to go out and establish uh, a strike and a BAPO with the, with the American president. He has to establish. They have to get the sense he's meeting the biz businesses there. They have to get a sense that um, things have changed in India and that they will be uh, welcome uh, partner players in India's growth story. And um, as he said that, you know, we will look east, but we will also link with the west. So India, I think, by and large, in his view, he'll have to convince the Americans, is going to be as open to them as to the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what, uh, what's the sense you get when you speak to uh, global investors, Sharia, but uh, whenever I've spoken to them, and we're talking about the serious investors who are looking at long-term role in this country, 
Their view is that, uh, look, it's still very early days. We are not passing any judgment this way or that way. We are going to probably wait till the next budget uh, and see the direction that the reform path takes. That, that's the view they seem to have. They are bullish India. They want to invest. And they're not passing judgment in terms of 100 days, what has this government achieved? How critical, therefore, do you think would be the next six months and especially the next budget? I think, Vivek, the, the, this government or this administration, and I think pretty much every administration, as we saw, even with the last one, will have to constantly be, uh, be on the line for their performance. It's just not a question of next six months or the next budget. Uh, because we did see with the UPA how things actually did turn from an extreme bullish sentiment about them. Uh, with just a few years of uh, intransigence and you know, indecision making in Delhi. Mm. So I think, and I'm, I'm, I'll take your question, but you know, the, the point I'm trying to make to you is that in my, in my dis uh, discussions with investors, I feel that you're absolutely right, that they are watching, they are waiting and watching. Uh, they will always be waiting and watching. and acting by, uh, alongside uh, as they wait and watch. They will be constantly evaluating. They will do it for the next six months and the six months, you know. And I think in that is a very positive uh, message uh, that one must read because, you know, uh, they have shred the negativism and the, uh, and the, and the uh, sort of, uh, you know, view that they had on India till three months ago. Mm. And a lot of that credit has to be given to the kind of credible uh, dialogue that has started out of New Delhi, the kind of credible engagement. I mean, as I said, in three months, that's the maximum you can expect. Mm. So to say that these investors have started, uh, you know, not taking things positively is actually will not be completely correct because you are seeing them move from sort of the negative to neutral and saying, we're now ready to engage. We're ready to, uh, we're ready to uh, uh, talk to uh, this government and see what they are going to do. Mm -hmm. And if I give you some facts, you will uh, be surprised that in the next last three months, the total FDI, month on month in India, has actually jumped up by about 70%. Mm -hmm. And the total FII, of course, has jumped as much as about 350%. Mm -hmm. So it is not as if, you know, we are back, we are tracking about $3 billion of FDI every month now, mm -hmm. as against about a billion and a half. So, you know, I think, I think things are starting to change. At least those investors who had done their work, who were looking to see that if things changed in India, have actually started committing capital. Mm. But the bigger ones, as you, as you rightly said, will take a little bit more time. And um, the next budget will be a milestone. Uh, but I think they will also be watching the sectoral developments um, on, on sector by sector to see that indeed is enough space being created for them. So to give you an example, case in point, Look what happened with Flipkart and with subsequent announcement by Amazon. Mm. I think there is a by and large an understanding that internet space in India mm. is going to be a sector that will grow, that the, the, give, the, the increasing Indian middle class, the young population of India. And I think what you are seeing, in the emergence of technologies coming out of India is giving global companies and strategics that India will be a good place to invest in these supply chains and in these businesses. Mm. So, you know, and, and there you are already seeing the movement. Hmm. You may start to see that in other sectors. I think the next big sector that you might start to see that maybe in, in somewhere in infrastructure, maybe roads, maybe subsequently on power and coal, if we can get these things sorted out. Uh, I'm, other... I'm glad you said subsequently because these are a couple of sectors uh, where people are beginning to feel that not much is changing. And again, they're very complex sectors. Let's add telecom to it, for example. There are complex issues there. Uh, do you believe that at least directionally a lot of thing is, things are being done there to fix it? I would have thought so, uh, because as you said, as you rightly said, that the that you know the, the the point is that once you sort of hit rock bottom, the only way you can go up mm. is up. We are at a situation where something has to be done, uh, you know, and at least what I see is that at least there is an identification of the issues. So, you know, unless we unless we're expecting this government to be the same like last, which, you know, I didn't, well, the last government, of course, even refused to accept that there were issues. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if they accept the issues, uh, that's a positive step. But if they don't do anything about it, you know, uh, there, is, there is going to be, uh, there's going to be a serious problem. Uh, at least till now, I have no other basis, but at least what I'm hearing, I'm seeing that at least 
you know, they are doing the right thing, they're making the right noises. So well, I'm assuming that... Well, um, one of the sectors you are personally very passionate about and you've done a lot of work in that sector is, for example, the entire energy space. Uh, and we have briefly talked about this in our previous interaction. But let me ask you this. Do you believe, and of course we have this landmark verdict which has just come out, do, do you believe that there is enough ideas, there is enough uh, thought process going on in fixing the power sector? You would agree that, as you said, it is rock bottom right now, isn't it? Exactly. So what are the, what are the, what are the issues the, if, if, if for, the power, for the power sector today? You just break them in sort of the two, at two levels. There is the immediate issue. There is an immediate issue that we have a generation problem. Not because our generation capacity has not come online, because, but we have a coal issue. So I think that are the issues that the government has to take on immediately. It has to solve these issues on a tactical basis, whether it's importing more coal or whether it is building our, our enhancing our supply line to increase the coal availability to these, so that our power plants get back onto the PLF that they're supposed to, and we can start generating the, the optimum amount of power that we are, you know, today have the installed capacity. Then we have an immediate task in the short run also, which is to say that the generation capacity that is coming online in the 12 five-year plan, is that on track? Why, where, where are they st uh, stuck and if there's debottling of those stuck projects? Yeah. From whatever I'm hearing from the industry, there has been serious engagement with the ministry, with the banks, in trying to at least declog some of that pipeline. Some of them have, of course, environmental issues and bigger issues, but the ones that are low-hanging fruits, that I understand is actually happening as we speak. Mm. So that is positive. Mm. These are immediate problems that need to be sorted. Mm. Uh, you mentioned coal. At least the whole cloud of uncertainty mm. over the coal issue is gone. Mm. So now the government has a clean slate by which they can actually put in whatever they wish to in terms of how this sector will develop going from here. But going back to your sec of the point that uh, the, 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 so this the government should be doing. This is this is I call as part of good governance. Mm. This is what was expected of them. But I think the, the 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 more challenging part, and I think this is where I hope once this new uh, planning commission comes in place, and you know once we have the that the contours of that clear, the more strategic things will start. The effective governance part will start, which is to say, okay, so how can we get power? on a 24-7 by basis to all our people in this finite period. Mm. Are there ways that we can re-look at the structure? How should we look at public-private participation? How should we look upon making the state partners? How should we be looking at about the 60 gigawatts of thermal plants that are already existing? Could we recapitalize them? Could we bring them into more effective and efficient structures by which we could monetize some of those and actually release capital for further growth of this sector. I think that is going to be the subsequent step. And uh, I think right now, possibly not much thinking is going on that because um, I think the government of the day is indeed seized with uh, doing, taking out the low hanging fruits. Yeah. Uh, but that's a good place to start. I yeah. mean, you know, you know I, they would have been, they would have been uh, uh, useless to actually start thinking about sort of the medium term issues if the short term issues were not sorted. Yeah. Do, you, do you believe finally that say, from now to six months, there could be actually a lot of all these ideas which are already being discussed, finalized, would actually start getting implemented? I think debate on a lot of them will start mm. in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the public domain. Um, I think, uh, you know, it may take government a little bit more time to concretize uh, one idea over the other because mm. that actually then means that you are closing the other options and committing yourselves in a certain direction. Yeah. Uh, but in the time frame of the next six months, I think that that definitely uh, will start. And we are seeing that, by the way. You've seen that in the railways. There has yeah. been this you know, uh, this committee has been constituted, uh, constituted under the big De Broy to look at the, uh, the rail reforms of the railway sector. Yeah. That's, you know, they, they've been given a year to come back. In the next one year, they're going to be de engaging, debating. Uh, so you see, you know, India has become a big, India is a big elephant now. You know directional change is something that has to be very well thought through. Mm. It can't be ad hoc. Uh, you know, if you were a small economy, if you were working off the 91 base, maybe it was possible. But today, we are, we've got, um, you know, we are the f second largest sector, power sector in the world. Mm. Take, take an example of energy. Whatever we decide now, uh, it will take a few years to implement. 
and even a further set of years to 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 benefit from so one of the one of the uh, uh, you know challenges or one of the tests of the statementship of mr modi will be that will he put that kind of an architecture in place uh, some of which he may or may not get the electoral dividend as early as 2019 but is that but would indeed put india back on track for a long term secular growth mm. and that is one point i think the investors will be really looking at because that would mean that india is a long term destination to do business in pleasure like always talking thank to you. you thank you very much uh, shorya for coming thank back you.